Excellent. Well, I'll be hanged. King George has grown tired of our shenanigans. Who's the grim fella? That's Captain Woods Rogers. Not a man I want seeing my face. We desire a parley with the men who call themselves governors of this island. Charles Vane, Ben Hornigold, and Ed Thatch. Come forth, if you please. Hear about the King's pardon, I reckon. What the hell is Hornigold doing? <sighs> Lily livid punk! What are you men up to? I am grateful for your geniality, Captain Hornigold. Don't mistake my decorum for deference, Governor. I'm eager to hear what you have to say, but of uncertain mind otherwise. Very well put. And it's a fairer shake than I expected to see from any pirate. But I promise fair treatment to all who hear me out. Only wait a while longer, Governor Rogers. These rascals will show their true colors in time. Calm, Commodore Chamberlain. I have given Captain Hornigold my word that we will be equitable. Won't do you a look of good. Men like him are a blight on His Majesty's reputation and a peculiar cancer afflicting the new world. The King wants them eradicated, above all else. Is this the town square? As close to one as we've ever had. Incredible. It's no cleaner than a dog's kennel. Captain Hornigold, please call your men. Rackham, Vane, the governor's come calling. Bring Burgess and Cochrane as well. His pleasure. I have my methods, Commodore, and I expect you to honor me for the letter. for the king's emissaries. Out of the way, you bastards! Go on! Our only aim here is to treat with the masters of this community. All others are encouraged to go about their usual business. Go on, move! Go!
Commodore Chamberlain, please see that all merchants, masons, and carpenters are rounded up and brought to me this afternoon. We must see about repairing this fortress. You should be confiscating weapons, Governor. Send these pirates a clear, strong message that the King's emissaries are not to be trifled with. I have no wish to stir up animosity here, Commodore. And though well armed, we are outnumbered by a decent margin. Slow persuasion is our best and most efficient weapon. Twaddle, Governor! We should sink every goddamn ship not flying the King's colors. To do otherwise is just a certain weakness in our bearing. Silence, Commodore! I am the goddamn governor here, serving at the king's pleasure, and I will make the bloody decisions. Is that clear, sir? Aye, sir. Your wishes are clear as crystal. Charles Commodore, we're in position. Governor Rogers believes he can make men of these monkeys yet. I do not. Return to your post and await my orders.
punish and declare that in case any of the said pirates shall on or before the 5th of September, in the year of our Lord 1718, surrender him or themselves to any one of the principal secretaries of state in Great Britain or Ireland, or to any governor or deputy governor of any of our parts of the beyond the sea. Any such pirates and pirates shall surrender in him or themselves as aforesaid shall have our gracious pardon of and for such his or their piracy or pirate is by him or them committed before the 5th of January next ensuing and we do hereby strictly charge and command all our admirals, captains and other officers at sea and all our governors and commanders of any forts, castles or other places in our plantation and all our officers, civil and military to seize and take such of the pirates who shall refuse or neglect to surrender themselves accordingly. I pray you take the prudent course, gentlemen, and accept the king's pardon as soon as your hearts allow. For until such time, all of you will be confined in Nassau. I am sorry for this. But in lieu of a public trial, this pardon is your best bet. The governor puts it far too brightly, maggots. Take this message home. Accept the king's protection forthwith, or we will raise this town to its foundation and stretch your bloody necks. Peace, Commodore Chamberlain. We are messengers, not executioners. Not yet. Oh, thank you, sir. God save you. Look on this as a stroke of fortune, lads. We should take the King's pardon and salvage what dignity we Peace. own. Peace. I'll be hanged before I surrender to that bobby. Check your head, Vane. We had here a rare opportunity, a chance to take something base and shape it into a government made and maintained by men of vision. But in two years, we pissed it away. I won't make that mistake again. It's truth he's telling, and you whelps can't handle it. But you, you folks-all-headed fuddlers, See you at the gallows. You'll all be dead, man! Bastards! I need a drink.
Fortune! Look at him. Turn cop. Makes me bloody ill to think on how many times I've put up with horny gold in his self-righteous shite. Verily, you are a man of principle, Captain Hornigold. A man I believe I can trust with my best ideas. Faith and we'll survive this, Charles, with our pride intact. Well, that's confidence. You brewed a plan I might get a taste of? NASA is over, that's plain to see. I say we skip out tonight and regroup at my compound. Fair enough, what's your angle? The Brits have brought their supplies ashore, see? If we nick some gunpowder and pine pitch, we can build a fire ship and send it straight at the blockade, blasting it to smithereens. Aye. We'll use Rackham's ship. You ain't a capable captain. My conscience is clear. Right. When you get the gunpowder, I'll secure the pine pitch.
told you. Stop that man! You! Ugh. <sighs> 
told you. I'll have your liver out, mate. I've got a shot. Come on, boys, you're lagging. It's this bloody hemp. Lieutenant. Shh. Aye, sir. The Commodore fears a revolt is nigh. His orders are to sink every goddamn pirate ship now anchored in that harbor tonight. It's by the governor's wishes, sir. This is a direct order, soldier. You will take position on the grounded galleon and await the Commodore's further orders. Is that clear? Aye, sir. The conniving bastard. Someone ought to slit the Commodore's throat before he gets a chance to bark those orders. You think so? We're dead in the water otherwise. All right, I'll kill him. Your brains are baked. I won't take no part in killing the Commodore. Not one of the King's men. Well, we can't risk our good fortune. I'll be waiting for you. Hi, sir. 
the Commodore ranting and raving about Woods Rogers, calling him a heathen. What's happened to set them to off? What the man? You don't want the governor's ire brought down on you. He's a mysterious soul. Well, I'm much more afraid of the Commodore in truth. He's a serious chap. No sense of humor. The Governor's given us a pardon, Commodore. 
Don't a man's word mean anything in these times? A syphilis clouded your mind. Why scratch and claw to protect such squalor? Your parasites feeding off the industry of honest men. Much like King George in that respect. Know your place, peasant! You may have taken my life, but you have not improved your own by any measure. Does some purpose keep you talking? <sighs> if not for that heathen, Governor Rogers, I'd have seen you hanged from your own cross trees. Worm. All of you. Ugh! <laughs> 